Ride the Blue Wave 2018 and the man who wants to bear Michael Avenatti's child, <laughs> Mr. Stephen Hanks. <laughs> Glitch right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I didn't see any glitch. This, no <laughs> this is why you shoot the live stream. Okay. Nice blue spats. Thank you. Hey. Hey. Is everybody angry? Yeah. 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 Is everybody motivated? Yeah. yeah. Is everybody gonna vote in November? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take it away, Tracy Star. Less bitter, less often on Twitter, something that's based on fact. It sweeps you up, this great blue wave. More civilizing, less womanizing, someone who knows how to act. A simple reminder, we used to be kinder and not so easily afraid. With our waters so troubled, our efforts are doubled. Come join a great crusade. Come on and ride this great blue wave. It's likely to see a war with Korea. Come join the great Great blue, wave. Great blue wave, something less rashes, something less fascist, something for which we're proud. It sweeps you up, this great blue wave. Great blue wave. The waters will gush in and make us less Russian. Come sing the song out loud. His decisions are awful and mostly unlawful. No wonder why the whole world is dismayed. If you want to disable a guy that's unstable, come join a great crusade. This great blue wave. Much less absurd, like, less like the Third Reich. I just want you to, we have two additional guests. I come to one of them tonight. Big Barack Obama and tiny little Donald Trump. He's a bigger man, he's saying right there. I love that shirt. Welcome to Cabaret Campaign's Ride the Blue Wave 2018. I am your producer and host and resident rabble rouser, Stephen Hanks. Yeah. And before, before I talk about why we're here tonight, I just want to acknowledge a couple of people. First of all, the uh, wonderful musical director, not only on this show, but she came through on the first show we did in April because the musical director we had for that show had to get surgery, couldn't do it, so she stepped in yeah. doing two shows <laughs> pro bono on top of everything else. She's unbelievable. Tracy Sark. Yeah. Yes, and I also want to acknowledge the writer of our uh, The Great Blue Wave theme song, my friend and the great musical theater composer, Michael Roberts. 
Michael, Michael is, Michael's going to be the musical director for our show in October, October 13th. That'll be the fifth one. So, um, I thought, you know, when I was preparing for the show a couple weeks ago, started thinking about what I was going to say at the open, um, I thought my job would be, given that I'd probably be talking to a crowd that was like-minded, preaching to the converted and all that jazz, that I would probably have to say something to talk you all off the ledge. But since I am about to jump out of a window, I am in no position to do that. Um, you know, when we did the show in April, before we did the show, the first show in April, things were pretty bad. Um, here are some of the things that happened before we did that show. Uh, General McMaster, who was the National Security Director, uh, quit. Um, McCabe and uh, Tillerson were fired, right? We had that Randy Jackson uh, fiasco, the doctor, remember that, Jack? I mean, there were a lot of bad things going on. I thought it could not get any worse. And here we are a few months later, and look at what's going on. So, um, you know, remember, remember Debbie Downer from Saturday Night Live? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of think I'm going to be like a Stephen Sadsack. Right but... Um, I'll tell you a little bit about how this started and what we're doing, and I'll try to be as quick as possible so you can see and hear six amazing talents that yes. are gonna be performing tonight. So um, I have been massively depressed, as I'm sure a lot of you have been since the day of the election in 2016. And I was racking my brains for the entire year and a half from that point on, well, for a year maybe, what, what could I do? And I thought about, well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign up with Barack Obama and Eric Holder's uh, organization that they, they started to stop voter suppression, which I think is the most important issue that we have to face. Um, every, ladies and gentlemen, I can't emphasize this enough. No matter what cause you champion, or are behind or worry about, whether it's LGBT rights, whether it's the environment, whether it's what's going on with immigration, whether it's women's health. You can go down the entire list of it, gun control. None of it gets accomplished unless we protect the right to vote. Yeah, right. It all stems Absolutely. from that. Mm -hmm. So that's what the focus has. So I was thinking about how can I get involved in one of those organizations and they're all in Washington, and I wasn't going to leave, you know, to go to Washington, even to volunteer. So, at the, around, uh, bef between New Christmas and New Year's last year, I was at a show, one of my clients, Jeff McCauley, was performing at Pangea, and I had my two-drink minimum in the room, and then I had another two-drink maximum after the show, <laughs> and I was sitting with my friend Sandra Bargeman, who was in the first cast uh, in April, and... I was like, Sandra, what am I going to do? I got to do something. I got to find a way to, you know, fight this. And then it just hit me. Cabaret shows, political action. Cabaret campaign drives <laughs> Combine the love and the passion and the anger, <laughs> and you have what we are here for tonight. So, um... Now again, we're preaching to the converted. This is New York, it's a blue state. But what you really need to do, what you can accomplish is, besides sending money to candidates all over the country as much as you can, if you can, if you can travel to another state or, or another district outside of New York and spend some time working for a candidate, making phone calls, whatever you can do, sending postcards, any little bit helps, all right? Because, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I can't stress this enough. I have been a political junkie since I was eight years old. And I'm telling you, this election is the most important in my lifetime. I know they say that's a key. People say that all the time, every election. Oh, it's the most important one. This really is, for reasons that are pretty obvious. So with that said, now we're going to have a little respite from all the stress and despair 
and revel in listening to some wonderful performers. And so we're going to start the show with somebody who is really, really, really uh, climbed the charts or whatever you want to say in cabaret the last couple of years. She has been doing some outstanding shows. She was an award winner from Broadway World for Best Female Vocalist last year. And most recently, she's been doing a series of shows honoring the songbook of Bruce Springsteen. And she's actually going to be performing that show at Don't Tell Mama November 7th, I believe. Well, we, ju we just found out that it, that might be a different date. But it, oh, okay. we'll let you know. We'll, we'll let you know. In any event, it's a wonderful show. She's an amazing performer, as cute as a button. Here she is, Lisa Vigiano. Thank you for doing this, Stephen. Here's my, I decided to introduce my candidate with a speech. <laughs> my name is Lisa Vigiano, artist, educator, friend, wife, mother. My husband Dave, yes, a straight white male, one of the good ones, are, and I are raising two wholehearted and courageous boys. We live in the burbs now, but we are both from a blue collar region of New Jersey, Hudson County. We were born. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we were born and bred by union people, construction workers, yeah. teachers, and cops. What we want as a family is support for universal health care, more support for the environment. Support for education, Lord knows our countries and leaders need it. <laughs> more equality, more equal pay, well, equal pay. <laughs> Support for immigrants, more truth, more kindness, more caring. More realization of the American dream. And that's what Randy Bryce wants as well. In Wisconsin's first congressional district, Randy Bryce is vying for Paul Ryan's seat. Yeah. He is a veteran of the U.S. Army, a cancer survivor, and a union iron worker. <coughs> Randy Bryce represents those from which I come, mm -hmm. the working class of America. Thank you. 
Pullman Park rises bold and stark Kids are huddled on the beach in the mist I wanna die with you ending on the street tonight In an everlasting Me. 
making me cry that early in the show. <laughs> God, they don't read their emails. Whew. Anyway, one of the good things about um, doing this kind of hosting where you get to come up and introduce the next performer is that it allows you to remember all the things you were going to say before the last one, and you can catch up. Here's what I was going to say to start, and I'll say it now, and watching Lisa reminded me of this. Um, I have been observing the singers in this show since I started in Cabaret eight years ago, and the first four was as a reviewer. And I, I reviewed pretty much all of them. I think I stopped reviewing by the time I saw Lisa, but um, I reviewed everybody else. And um, obviously, I, I, I've loved them, um, but I love them. They became friends. I love them as performers. I love them as people. But I got to tell you something. The commitment to do something like this, they all, they've all done variety shows before without getting paid. I mean, many times, for years they've been doing these shows. But to do a show like this with the commitment and the passion that they have for the subject matter and the care and the, the time that they took to pick the songs for this particular show, I not only love them now, but ladies, I'm gonna love you forever. So we got that out of the way. We can introduce our next guest. Love you too, Steve. Thank you. Um, so our next guest has been in cabaret for many, many years. Like everybody else, is another award winner. She's not only been a fabulous performer, but she's also produced many shows. She's produced shows at, at Urban Stages, Winter Rhythms Festival. Um, she's been involved in a lot of variety shows recently. Um, not only a, a great singer, but also a very accomplished songwriter, like a few of the performers you're going to hear tonight, who are also great songwriters. So she's going to do uh, one of her new originals that she wrote specifically for this show. So here to represent the Senate candidate, the Democratic Sen Senate candidate running against Ted Cruz in Texas. <laughs> Beto O'Rourke, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Sue Matsuki. So, top ten reasons why I chose to uh, represent Beto tonight. He is uh, from Texas, 16th District, and he's currently a representative. Number ten, he's a Columbia grad, and he's wicked, wicked smart. He has spent 14 of his 46 young years in public service. Come on, who wouldn't vote for a guy named Beto? Which is, which is a Spanish endearment for the word Robert, Roberto. 
And did I mention that um, he opposed the Orange Ones decision to end DACA? Just saying. <laughs> he played bass in a rock and roll band called Foss in the 90s. There's actually recordings of him. So he's a musician. He's one of us. Yay! And he's very, very supportive of um, the arts and keeping the arts in place. He's running for Senate against Ted Cruz. Yeah! Now, listen, that would be enough for me. I wouldn't need any of these other reasons. And quite frankly, I said in rehearsal that I would vote for a turnip if it was running against Ted Cruz, but definitely one of my reasons. As we celebrate and as we wind down the month of June, Gay Pride June, it should be noted that he led a successful fight to overturn the domestic partnership ban, arguing that marriage equality is simply a civil right. Yeah. Right. He's a Texan who supports gun control. Yeah. He's an Irish Catholic who has a 100% rating from Planned Parenthood for his support of all women's rights, including choice. He has pledged not to accept any PAC contributions, which is why we all need yes. to kind of try to give him some support. And actually, it's, it's, there's a little bit of buzz about him being a, a potential uh, presidential candidate. And the number one reason why... I have chosen him to represent tonight is, did I mention that he's running against Ted Cruz? <laughs> so I've written a song, and in his honor, I've given a little bit of a Texas country flair. <laughs> My love song to the orange one. I love you when a chicken sings. When pigs fly south in the early spring I love you when cabaret makes me rich <laughs> Russ, you know I love you when I weigh 125 When corduroy doesn't burn my thighs I love you when Ann Coulter's not a bitch <laughs> I love you when the Arabs and the Jews come together for a final truce. I love you when church and state are separate. I love you when Mike Pence comes out when one Huckabee says doesn't make me doubt. I love you when those housewives aren't so desperate. If you ask me if I love you, I say no, 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 no. But you only hear what you want to hear. I'm huge! Children locked in cages, ripped from their parents' arms. And you callously don't seem to even care. And what's up with Melania's coat? Come on, really? I love you when you are respected, not just by those who got you elected. I love you when... <laughs> Are, oh, I, was, uh, not, uh, I love you when you are respected. I got it not just by those who got you elected. I love you when the NRA is dejected. I love you when global warming fake news, when GMOs aren't in our food. I love you when our immigrants are protected. I love you when the selfie stops. No, really, people stop. When people of color don't fear cops. I love you when Ted Cruz stops making faces. I love you when Kim's ass is small. When Mexico finally pays for that wall. I love you when Roseanne is not a racist. If you ask me if I love you, I say no, 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 no. Stop tweeting, cause you sound so whiny. You're a hateful, stupid, narcissist, and fat and ugly too. And oh yeah, your hands are really, really tiny. And you know what they say about small hands? Small gloves. <laughs> I love you for never and a day. What more is there for me to say? I love you when those robocalls all stop. I don't even speak Chinese. 
So tell your damn people stop calling me They're barking up the wrong damn tree I love you when Hamilton the musical I said Hamilton, Alexander Hamilton Is a flop Can you hear me now? This is never ever gonna happen <laughs> Here, have fun tonight. <laughs> Don't ask me where I got that. Now this bathroom is very well supplied. So Stephen spoke earlier about how there is this pall over our country and it's, um, it's depression, it's stress, it's fear. Um, America is breaking my heart. Parts of America are breaking my heart. But what gets me through it, and I offer this to you specifically, Stephen, is sharing my fear with my friends and my husband, <coughs> activism, and a real deep gutted hope and belief that it will get better. It will. And it can get better if we go out and vote. So this is for all of you right. during those times where it's been a little rough. <laughs> Winter comes, can the spring be far behind? Beneath the deepest snows, the secret of a rose is merely that it knows you must believe in spring. Just as a tree is sure its leaves will reappear, it knows its emptiness is just a time of year. The frozen mountains dream of April's melting streams. How crystal clear it seems you must believe in spring you must believe in love and trust it's on its way just as that sleeping rose awaits the kiss of May so in a world of things that come and go where what you think you know you can't be certain of you must believe in spring you must be So um, our next performer is an incredibly multi-talented individual. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only is she a musical theater performer and somebody who's also done uh, a lot of plays, both in New York, off-Broadway, and, and outside of New York. She's written two musicals. One I had the pleasure of kind of discovering and bringing to uh, a musical theater development group that I had been involved with a few years ago. It was called Swooly Girl. Um, she's also done two different, completely different tribute shows celebrating the music of Sting over the last five or six years. Both of them tremendous. Played in all the rooms in New York City, including Joe's Pub in the Metropolitan Room. She most recently brought back a show called When Harry Met the Duke, 
uh, featuring the music of Harold Arlen and Duke Ellington, which was, I believe, back here at Don't Tell Mama. Um, she just does it all, and she's an unbelievably great songwriter, which you are about to hear. Yay! Representing Washington Senator Maria Cantwell, Woo! here's Rosemary Lohr. Yay! this song the day after the election 2016 I was in shock and disbelief but then I realized it was good we saw how clearly women were held to a higher standard and it made me angry and in my anger I created and that's what we have to do ladies and gentlemen we have to create anger. anger is an invitation to action here we go to be something that your folks could do if they were trying to get away from murderous regimes. So we should not hold other people to higher standards. And um, I don't think anybody in the room does. I think we're all here. But um, I do believe that uh, anger is an invitation to action. And it's uh, not a place to live in. It's a place to come from and do beautiful, loving, kind things, right? And pass it forward, right? 
And that's what Maria Cantwell is doing up in Washington State. She is the most senior junior senator up there. Okay, so she's been a senator since 2000. But at 28, so she's, she was born, and I'm gonna tell her age, she's, she was born you know, 60 years ago, but when she was 28, she went door to door, knocking on people's doors and talking to them individually so that she could be elected to the House of Representatives, which she was. And she, and she was there for many, many years, and then moved into the Senate. And, and this, she is the incumbent, and we can never take anything for granted. She's well-liked. But um, why I chose her is, of course, because she's a woman. She's Irish Catholic, yes. Okay, um, and she, um, she's 100% pro-choice, 100%, right? Yeah. Yes. She is for campaign, campaign finance reform, yes. Yeah. That's, that's huge in my book, healthcare reform. Yeah. And she has the highest record of anybody in office for her commitment to the environment. Yeah. Now, 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 I know we have to have the um, ability to vote, but we have to stay alive in order to vote. So when it, and, and you know, if we don't have trees, if we don't have the environment, we are not gonna have that ability to do that. So um, I wrote a little love song to a tree, to trees, because I do love them, and I believe that they're, um, they're fellow beings in our universe. Oh, sacred spirit tree, your beauty and your majesty are never lost on me. Never lost on me. What is a tree worth? What is a tree worth? What is a tree worth to earth? What is a tree worth? What is a tree worth? What is a tree worth to me? runoff water that after they come after storms 
We need these trees. We need each other. We have to remember we're all part of this community. And we all have to love each other. Good, bad, or ugly. Everybody. What is a tree worth? What is a tree worth? What is a tree worth to us? What is a tree worth? What is a tree worth? What is a tree worth to me? Oh, sacred spirit tree, your beauty and your majesty. I never lost a me. Also, uh, background singing was Miss Meg Flather <laughs> and Rory Krause, <laughs> who you'll be hearing from soon. I uh, just want to uh, mention that uh, Meg and Rosie and Tracy Stark have a have a um, a show and a group called the Unexpected Trio. <laughs> they were doing shows all last year, and they're going to be doing that show again. At Pangea, July 7th? July 7th, wow, I can't believe I remember. Glad I have those notes so they can look at before I come up here. What's that? Oh, I just said next Saturday. Oh, next Saturday. Oh, is it that soon? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, July, it's July already. Damn. Gee. Oh, it's unbelievable. So, um, uh, I am a huge, 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 I hate to say the word, Elton John fan. And um, when, whenever, um, for, all during the 70s, 80s, 90s, whenever a new Elton John came, record came out, I was there first day at the record store getting that album. So this particular, there's a song from this particular album which came out in 1992 called The One. Um, and there was a song on it that when I read Bernie Taupin's lyric, I couldn't, it, the record came out in about July 1992, and during that 92 spring and summer, I was very, very involved in the Clinton campaign, the Bill Clinton campaign. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> mainly in New York, and I, I was doing everything. I was doing street corner speaking. I was in Washington Square Park on milk cartons, talking to five people. I was, you know, banging on doors. I was watching TV to monitor how much news coverage everybody was going to get. I was speaking at senior citizen centers. I was very, very involved. So this record comes out, and I read Bernie Taupin's lyric, and it was just so obvious to me that it was, it was a lyric where he was really getting on the Reagan-Bush agenda and their presidency. And so... Every once in a while, I go back and I listen to that record. And before, I, I, when I was preparing for this show, I listened to that song again. And my God, 26 years later, the lyric is perfect for now, unfortunately. So I thought I would give it a shot. It's called Whitewash County. It's a hot down here I can almost smell the rain And I can almost taste the fear Behind your name Fans turning on a ceiling I feel sticky as a chili dog White boys hollering in the evening On that hollow log Got a past that 
fiddle scratching out a lazy tune Just the days from history past New dust, new broom It's a high hot buttered moon He's got a shiny new wax face Swears the south is gonna rise again soon All over the place You know, if I, I, you know, I'm repeating myself if I say, you know, she's another incredibly accomplished star, cabaret singer, multi-award winner, has been doing shows for years that have been tremendously positively reviewed. Um, one of the one of the best shows that I've ever seen in my time in cabaret was when I heard this lady do her tribute to Dara Stay a few years ago, which is an unbelievable show. I hope she brings it back again. You can't see a show like that enough. She's currently doing a new show um, that's been play, being playing at the Triad called Confound Me, which is a great set of wonderful songs, including a couple written by her husband, David Hayde, who is sitting right here. Um, beautifully live streaming for us, hoping my battery doesn't run out of my phone. Thank you, David. Um, so anyway, she is just uh, she's just done a tremendous number of shows, shows with Sean Harkness, great duo shows. She's amazing, and uh, she's got another show coming up. When is it, Karen? July 11th. July 11th. Yeah. Make believe you didn't hear her tell me that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Karen Oberlin. Yeah. Yeah. to have the show coming up over the last couple days uh, I was talking to David my husband the other day I was like you have to talk me down you know from Canada we've got to do something this is it's it's been tough right for all of us the past few days like one thing after another thing so here we are uh, helping to cheer each other on and to do something we can do something we can do we can vote, we can support these great politicians. So uh, it just really helps when we feel empowered in that way. So thank you, Stephen, for doing all this. So, <clears throat> Andrew Jantz, a Democratic prosecutor, yes, he deserves that, and deputy district attorney has been driven into politics by his desire to drive the corrupt and swampy Devin Nunes from the 22nd District of California. Jans was inspired to run because of the unethical actions of Nunes in Congress and DC. Yes, exactly. Personally, I see, I see Devin Nunes as monstrous. He has served for 15 years serving his own personal agenda and the agenda of his cronies, and it's time for him to go. Yeah. Yeah. 
Jans has fought for the rights of people in the 22nd District as a prosecutor and deputy DA, including representing farmers who need a change in water laws, immigration policy, and a fresh common sense approach to both health care and crime for all the people in that district. In other words, Jans actually cares about people. Yeah. What a novel idea. <laughs> for Bill Clinton, but I have been deeply involved in uh, politics and cared passionately, like all of my co-stars tonight. Um, but I've also devoted shows to people with their hearts in the right, and their hearts and art in the right place. Yeah. Uh, I have two show, the, the, I have one show devoted to Yip Harburg, who wrote the lyrics to that last song. Yeah. He wrote that inspired, uh, it's the same title as Rachel Carson's book of the same year, but it was inspired more by uh, the assassinations of Kennedy and Medgar Evers that year. Uh, and it's still poignant today. Um, and I also devoted a show to uh, the music, the songs of Randy Newman yeah. last year. And he has a different approach, but they both cared so deeply about social change and justice. And they felt that it was the right thing to do to make their art about that. Uh, both of them, very different ways though. Uh, Yip Harburg in a more serious vein like in that song, um, and Randy Newman in a more fun and playful, I don't know, funny uh, way of looking at it in this song. Um, this song can be funny, in today's climate, it can also be terrifying. <laughs> but let's choose funny tonight. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. We'll try. We'll try. Thank you. 
Yet all around, even our old friends put us down. Let's drop the big one and see what happens. We give them money, but are they grateful? No, they're spiteful. The big one and pulverize them. Asia's crowded, Europe's too old. Africa is far too hot and Canada's too cold. South America stole our name. Let's drop the big one, there'll be no one left to blame us. Mm. We'll save Australia. We'll build an all-American amusement park there. They got surfing too. Those London, oh Paris, more room for you and more room for me. And every city, the whole world round, will just be another. Presenting in these shows, um, when we did the first show in April, yeah. early April, it was before there were many primaries. So we, the performers, had to decide, you know, pretty much like in February around that time, who those particular performers were going to represent. So for that show, we only had people representing incumbent senators who were going to be running for re-election and weren't going to be involved in any major primary battle. So that made it easy. Um, we still have some of those people uh, that are up this year. And, you know, a lot of the pundits are talking about how, well, the Democrats have a great shot at winning the Congress, but maybe not such a great shot at taking back the Senate. And it's... God, it's so important that we get both houses of Congress back. So, you know, it would be great to get the Congress, but we got, we got, we can't leave anything to chance. So, um, it's really important that these incumbent senators get supported and win their reelections, yeah. because there's a lot of Democratic incumbents up 
and you never know what can happen. So we have to keep our eyes on the ball there. Yeah. Um, so that said, our next performer is going to be representing one of those incumbent senators. Before I tell you who, though, I want to say a little bit about her because she's amazing and one of the loves of my life. Um, <laughs> my wife even allows me to say that about her. Um, I don't know, does she? I better check. Oh, anyway. Um, anyway, look, um, th this... One of the great, one of the things that I love about Meg Flather, among other things, is that um, when when she did um, a show in a series that I did at the Metropolitan Room a couple of years ago called New York Cabaret's Greatest Hits. I don't know if any of you saw yeah. those shows. Thank you. As a matter of fact, um, Lori, Karen, Rosemary, and Meg all did. Shows in Cabaret's Greatest Hits. And Johnny was yep. in the booth for all. And Johnny was in the booth. Johnny, thanks for reminding me why I think you're the best tech guy in New York. Anyway, so she brought a show to that series that she had done years and years and years ago called Portraits, and she did she revised it, and my God, it was one of the most amazing shows yeah. that I've seen in my time in Cabaret. Yeah. And then she brought it to Don't Tell Mama for a run, which was incredible. But every, everything she does, whether it's Carly Simon tribute shows, or this new show that she's doing called Back When We Were Beautiful, which is an unbelievably poignant show. Um, every, she has just been a star the last couple of, she's always been a star, but the last couple of years, she's really achieved the Cabaret Heights, winning awards left and right for songwriting and performing. Tonight, she's going to be representing Ohio incumbent Senator Sherrod Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Meg Father. for Senator of New York, and I approve this message. So I'm here to talk about Sherrod Brown, my political crush. The gray curls, the gravelly voice, the slightly disheveled suit, that sort of Bobby Kennedy way about him. Two-term senator from Ohio who must keep his seat. Now despite his New England, Yale, Ivy League back background, he appeals to all voters. He's got that magical gift where the left love him and the right of Ohio vote for him. And a lot of people who voted for Trump in Ohio are planning on voting for Sherrod Brown, which is really fascinating. Now, they don't agree with him on health care, and they don't agree with him on wanting to reinstate bank regulations, and they don't agree with him that he wanted a larger stimulus in 2009. But they loved that he stood up against his party and his president regarding trade. So it's an interesting lesson, I think, for all of us as we coach our candidates, you know, because they will be listening to our coaching, don't you think? They read all the emails, I'm sure that to be authentic is more important than me agreeing with everything you say to me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I voted for my boyfriend, Michael Bloomberg, because I didn't agree with everything, but I just knew he was being straight with me. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's an important lesson. Authenticity is more important than a perfect speech and a perfect platform for a targeted audience after marketing people have done all the homework. Just talk to us. Yeah. 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 Just talk to us. So um, I'm going to pair a new song of mine with a little Carly Oscar winning song, uh, but first a little story. So I was, like all of you, so jazzed up on election night. I was going to have a little party in my apartment, I invited neighbors, and then around 8.30 we all started noticing what was happening. And I was, I just, I don't think I've ever had that emotion in my life. I've lost parents, and that was a different kind of loss because it was a loss that I, I really couldn't explain. And I hid. I got really depressed and I hid and I wasn't a active at all politically for a long time because I was mad. 
And then I wrote this song to wake myself up. So um, here we go. Watch. 
within and around in faces I pass the loss is profound these faces are calling me out of the shade there's work to be done some administrative stuff as we come to our last performer um, first order of business would be thank yous um, most important thank you of all is to the woman at the piano yeah. two shows two shows um, I want to thank everybody connected to Don't Tell Mama, Sydney Meyer, who has been so supportive, yeah. always supportive. Um, Sydney well, was on top of this. As soon as I told Sydney about this idea, he was all over it, as I'm sure he's been many times in his life. Uh, um, Sydney doesn't mind those jokes. He says them to me himself. Um, I want to thank the wonderful, the wonderful Randy, who's serving all of you. Randy Collins. Handling the whole room. And of course, the man on lights and sounds, Johnny Mercado. You're the best, John. John, I love you. I want you to do all my shows. Don't tell anybody I said that. Okay. So, um, and of course, I want to thank the following incredible people Meg Flather, Karen Oberlin, Rosemary Roar. Sue Matsuki, Lisa Vigiano, and I'll thank, thank the last performer as I bring her up here. Um, one, a couple of things I just want to tell you. There are some people I want to acknowledge in the audience. There are cards on your table, these little pink cabaret campaign cards. I don't know if everybody has one, but there are some um, in, the, in the shelf on your way out the door. They have all the future show dates on them. So our next show is going to be on August 16th, right in this room at 7 p.m. And I'm pleased to say that one of the performers in that show is here tonight, Mary Sue Daniels. Yeah. Um, now that's all going to be all. When I first put this together, I was going to do four shows, all women, because that's the only people who are friends with me in cabaret. You know? uh, but, you know, I thought, you know, I got to give the guys a chance. So I put one more show in in September that are all men, September 13th. And one of the performers in that show is here tonight, Bruce Clow is in the audience. And the last show is going to be on October 13th, which I conveniently scheduled on the night of my birthday. So I'm shaming you all into coming to that one right now. And there's somebody who's going to be in that show in the audience. She has been a client of mine. I, I was um, the promoter of her show, Let Me Entertain You Again, which she did at Don't Tell Mama. And she happens to be, and I don't know if she's like tired of hearing this, 
But this young lady was played Dainty June in the original version of Gypsy with Ethel Merman. Lane Bradbury is going to be in that show. So our, our final performer is somebody who's also, like everybody tonight, is incredibly amazing, um, has been a tremendous, tremendous performer going on three decades in New York. Um, she's one of the best jazz singers you will ever hear. Yeah. Yeah. She did. She did it. Now I got to tell you, when I did my New, when I did my New York Cabaret's Greatest Hits series, all of the shows were, as the title says, they were former shows that people had done years ago, and they brought back, you know, the show. Um, when I when I asked this performer to do it, she said, "Well, you know, I've been working with my musical director. It's going to be our 25th anniversary." So would it be okay if we did sort of our greatest hits of 25 years to celebrate? And of course, I said, okay. She would have beat the crap out of me if I told her no. <laughs> and it turned out to be, I mean, I, using the word transcendent would be crazy, but it kind of was. It was just an amazing, amazing show, an amazing performance. Um, so there's, there, it was sold out, you know, and, and uh, it, was, it was just incredible. <laughs> And the, and the one thing, the one thing about that show was, she this woman did a rendition of the song "Some Enchanted Evening" that was probably the greatest that I've ever heard. Other than Al Jolson's version, and she won't mind me saying that. <laughs> um, so now, of course, being the iconoclast that she was, to ask me if she could do something different for the series. She did the same thing again for this show. And when I asked who she was going to represent, she told me about somebody who was running for a state senate seat someplace. And I said, you know, well, you know, I really want to focus on Congress people and senators because we have to take back the Congress. And, and then I thought about it, and I'm like, you know, Steve, what's wrong with you? You know, you're a voter suppression guy. All of these voter suppression laws are created in the state legislatures all over the country. So we need to support people that are running for the state senate and state legislatures in all the country. So I said, absolutely, it'll be a great way to talk about how important that is. So I want to introduce our next performer who will tell you about who she is representing. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful, amazing Lauren Krauss.
notice all the children dead from war? Did you ever stop to notice the crying earth, the weeping shore? of the lyrics in that song are the lyrics he sang. And so what's devastating about it is that it, it's so freaking relevant now. But uh, Barack Obama tells us that progress is not a trend line. It goes like that. We're here. So what we have to look forward to is there. some hope we wouldn't be here tonight so so I decided I wanted to pick a, a sort of local candidate a state candidate because I believe very strongly that we rebuild this country from the local races up yes. I'm glad you agree I'm glad you agree because you have an assignment there is a card on your table and it's called postcards for Democrats how many people here clap if you do postcards for Democrats, postcards to Democrats. Woo! Okay, that should be a lot louder. Should be. So here's what it is. Very briefly, what we do is we hand write postcards to registered Democrats in races all around the country so you can sit on your ass in your home and make a difference yes. for 39 cents. They make it very easy for you. You don't have a lot of time, write two. They give you the addresses, they give you information to say this is something you really, really, really want to become involved in. Private message me on Facebook if you have questions. My candidate. 
This gentleman uh, is running for state senate in Texas in District 8, and he, even though it's a state race, you actually have heard of him because he's been in the national discussion. A few years ago, he and his now husband, along with another couple, sued the state of Texas for marriage equality. And they won. So then, you know how it goes, your friends then say, you should run for office. Only he really has qualifications for it, so he decided to run for office. And I believe when he is elected, he will become the first openly gay person to serve in the state Senate in Texas. I'm not absolutely positive about that, but there's a really good way for me to check. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my extreme honor to introduce to you the Democratic candidate for state Senate in Texas, District 8, Mark Ferris. in the world, a real difference. Take those freaking postcards home and make a difference and find out a way to get people to vote so that people like this can serve in states like Texas. New Yorkers always complain like we can't have an impact. Yes, you can. Thank you. Would you like to say that? Thank you all very much. First of all, this is my husband. Now, Ned told me that I had to be straight. I think I'll just be honest. Here's what I want to say is, Dustin Lance Black came to Dallas. He is the Academy Award winning screenwriter for the movie Milk. Yeah. And for the series when he dies. And he and his husband flew all the way from London to Dallas at their own expense to do a fundraiser for me. Wow. Yeah. And one of the things that he said is he got up and he talked about Harvey Milk, who was really the first openly gay person ever elected in the U.S., elected as the mayor, a uh, 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 councilman, a assemblyman in San Francisco. And he quoted Harvey Milk saying that when a gay person runs for office, it gives other gay people hope. Mm -hmm. And he also said that he would go further than that, that it also gives everyone else hope, that it gives each of us in some way or another or another. Each of us are a little bit different, whether it's race or sex or economics or whatever. We're all a little different, and we're all told that we can't do something. And that when a gay person runs for office, he or she gives not just gay people hope, but gives everyone hope. want to take what Dustin Lance Black said a little further and and say that really being here tonight, Lori and Stephen, the PNS and all the other singers, all of you, the truth of the matter is you give me hope and that encourages me. So thank you very much.
want to say one thing. I, I, I forgot to mention this, just in case you didn't know. All of the proceeds from the show tonight, the, all the cover charges, plus matching funds that I am going to provide or raise, are going to be divided among the candidates who were represented tonight. Yes! And I want to say, for me personally, Stephen, that I want to thank you yes. for giving me the opportunity to use my music for the greater good.
Ladies and gentlemen, Cabaret Campaign, Ride the Blue Wave.